Scott Drew and the it's Baylor an Bears have another first Baylor round draft. For huge for the Ever program. since it was good a conversation, the, boys, the, a the NIL. The this is this university good? Baylor. Can we be better? What, what's going on? This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast you Network. You are Locked On your Baylor, team. your Every daily day. podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. I am back from the remote Alaskan bush and had to cut my own hair because I haven't had one in two months. That's Tyler Janes. Tyler works for an NIL company that is signing athletes deals. And you can talk more about the Influxer app and what Influxer does, but we're going to jump right in to the NIL conversation around Baylor and, and what that has looked like for the university. Thank you, by the way, for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. So, Tyler, let, let's go straight to the last week. The conversation yeah. that was started on Twitter, Sikkim365, mentioning how Baylor is, is not up to par with NIL and that, that things are not where they need to be. Your response to that was about your company, Influxer, signing NIL agreements with multiple schools and having trouble – with a school like Baylor where you played football. So obviously an avid Baylor supporter, this is not something you're rooting against, the university that is. Walk me through, first and foremost, before we get into even Baylor's response, your your thought process in, in responding to that and where you thought, okay, it's time to speak up about what Baylor's doing NIL-wise. Sure thing. Yeah, so, you know, been in the NIL space and industry for the past couple of years now, and uh, I've seen a lot of uh, the Twitter people and the Baylor fans just complaining over and over about the lack of NIL support. It's certainly something I tried to, you know, immerse myself in from from the beginning. I quickly yeah. learned that, you know, Baylor and same with a lot of other schools, Baylor is taking a very conservative approach to a lot of the uh, ideology behind it. And I don't think that comes Whoa. to any surprise. Tyler, did you say Baylor and conservative? <laughs> <laughs> you are blowing my mind right now. I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to put a little pin in that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe, maybe unheard of by, by some people. <laughs> However, uh, you know, certainly at the, at the time I understood the stance and, you know, everybody wants to see how, how things shake out. But after seeing it for the past couple of years and trying to get involved with, with Baylor and the NIL space, there was just, you know, not the best communication at times, um, just as far as getting clear answers. They, I don't know if they, you know, are able to provide uh, clear answers themselves. So it's kind of just been silent from, you know, the university level. And so just seeing everybody on Twitter over the past couple of years has certainly built up, uh, you know, a lot of, I guess, frustration and disappointment because of, um, you know, being a Baylor alumni, being a Baylor fan, naturally, I'm going to see a lot more of that on Twitter than I am any other school. And, you know, just wanted to start engaging in some dialogue now that I've been working with this company for uh, two years and yeah. have seen how so many different institutions um, handle NIL it just seemed like a really good time to, hey, maybe bring some light to, to Baylor. Now that I know how other schools operate, I know how all these other institutional policies have worked. I'm, I'm very immersed. I'm very, you know, I'm doing this for a living day in and day out. Mm. Want to engage in some hopefully positive, constructive conversations on Twitter of, hey, what can we be doing? Not just as, uh, you know, pointing the finger at Baylor, but also it, it takes a community. It takes the fans. It takes the Twitter to be supportive and really enact some change. And so I wanted to be on the forefront of that and hopefully, um, you know, bring some positivity because I think what people need to realize too is NIL is so new. No one, no school is going to have kind of a, a crystal ball or a, a perfect roadmap of what yeah. NIL should look like. It's two years old. It's a lot of trial and error. And, you know, with Baylor, it, it, it's clear it's not the best out there. But that doesn't mean you can't improve. That doesn't mean we can't put things in place that other institutions have put in that, you know, has been successful elsewhere. And starting that dialogue, it's clear that, you know, Baylor will will listen to their fans and will listen to what is put out there on social media. And uh, again, my tweet and what I put out there was purely coming from a place of wanting to improve, not trying to bash. I, I was a big Baylor fan growing up, played football there. You know, a lot of our staff is from Baylor and has ties to Baylor. We want the best for Baylor now that we've seen it firsthand at, you know, hundreds of different schools. 
what can we do with this platform that we have to help improve that? And so that's really where, you know, that tweet came from and what our mission is in trying to get involved with, with Baylor. Yeah. Well, Tyler, it obviously became a public conversation that a lot of Baylor fans jumped into, chimed in with opinions that were many uninformed and one very informed opinion being Javon Overshone. And that's where the dialogue began as Baylor, as you mentioned, chimed in. I'm going to read this tweet. It's long and I I know you've read it, I'm sure, multiple times. Uh, But for those who didn't see it, Javon Overshone responded to you and Influxer by saying Baylor's extremely supportive of NIL opportunities for student athletes, including co-branded with Baylor Marks. At the time that was presented by Influxer was co-branded jersey or a shirt jersey. Glad she clarified for baseball that offer that offer was declined or disapproved by Baylor. However, we required adherence to the same standards and processes of 300 plus existing licensees. Baylor baseball, softball, men's basketball, women's basketball, football all have jerseys available at the bookstore. We currently work with Nike, Rally House, Panini, and other major brands. Always open to working with new licensees and remain open to continue conversation that, uh, if done, appropriate moving forth. So that that reference to jerseys from Influxer to Baylor, she brought it up specifically and added that into the conversation. Walk me through how that worked with Baylor and, and why that was added so explicitly into this conversation. Sure thing. So, you know, with our company, Influxer, we – procure and produce co-licensed merchandise all over the country. We're, we're licensed with 70 different universities now, um, you know, several power five mid majors in Texas, all over the you know, West coast, East coast. So we've seen, and every school is going to be different. And so we've just seen a lot of, um, you know, a lot of schools that come in and we're like very pro NIL and very, yes, yeah. we, this, this, this is great. We have all the information we need. We'll get this in front of our players. Um, very supportive. And, you know, certainly not just Baylor, but, some other schools have taken, like I said at the beginning, the more conservative approach, and which I totally understand. And it is common at, at larger institutions. So uh, I want that to be very clear. However, there is a few set of schools that um, have maybe some additional red tape that you kind of have to yeah. cut through. And it's no secret, but Baylor would be one of those. And they have things in place. And it, it again, it just becomes... Be- it comes because of how new NIL is that sometimes they aren't maybe necessary. And in this case, it, it's our belief that it, it isn't necessary. Well, with Baylor, you know, when we reached out to them, we were hoping to get, you know, some of that, uh, I guess, get the license approved, move forward with the student athletes that we had already signed contracts with and yeah. start making the, the t-shirt jerseys. Well, in our conversations with Baylor, uh, you know, very, very standard process for us is we want to connect with the administration. We want to build that relationship. Having the ties to Baylor that we do felt that we, you know, would easily have a shoe in. And I think where, you know, the misunderstanding was with with Baylor, which, by the way, jo- Jovan's unbelievable. She's great. Amazing to talk to. There just became a little bit of, you know, lost in translation of what exactly we're offering right. and why we don't think that you know, additional requirements are needed outside of the scope of normal licensing and signing an NIL deal with, with the players. And yeah. unfortunately just like never got any solid answers back. And we're like, we're doing it with this school and they have, you know, the same protocol, same things in place. And every contract is going to be different with each university, but we just wanted to get to that point of having a conversation to where we could hash this out. And that kind of never came until yeah. eventually reached out on Twitter, which, We've now re-engaged conversations with Baylor. So um, that's where that all came from. We, you know, we're told we wouldn't get approved for our license unless we also, you know, paid this additional uh, group licensing partner, which I can get into a little bit of those details. But, um, you know, it's no secret Brand Art Group is is suing EA Sports. That is one of these groups li- license holders. Well, not every school has a group license partner. Um, yeah. And it's our belief, and I'll I'll put this out there, like it's our belief that it, it's not necessary in our case. Um, our deal with the student athletes is an individual deal. Each player makes their own independent royalties. Yeah. They, every shirt, every apparel item that gets sold has their own unique last name and number on it and sport on the front, you know, utilizing the school marks. And so because of that, it's not, hey, we're paying $500 to every single player for the use of their NIL in, in a video game. It's it's very specific to each specific player receiving their own independent 
royalties. That's our belief. We're going to you know stand behind that pretty pretty strongly, and you know trying to get that over the finish line with with Baylor. They were just conversations weren't progressing and weren't hearing us in in, in that regard. So, um, and that's all we wanted was just to to really have a conversation with Baylor and where that tweet probably came from. And thank goodness, you know, she reached back out or, you know, the people engaged with it to where it got their, their attention. Because again, at the end of the day, I am a Baylor alum, big Baylor fan. I want nothing but the best. And the thing is, is I know while sure, like t-shirt jerseys, like no one's going to make a million dollars off that. This isn't going to be the end all be all for these players. However, if we're struggling with this, I'm sure other companies are struggling with it at Baylor. It, it's, you know, an entry, it's a gateway. We, as a company, are going to be able to provide a lot more opportunities than just the t-shirt jerseys. And so, you know, getting into the door and having these conversations now is important if you want that to happen in a year or two and providing, you know, commercials and um, large NIL sponsorships, corporate sponsorships to these student athletes. So, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, being a one of the few NIO companies that are even out there and being founded by a former Baylor football player want to see that progress and have those conversations and bring these opportunities to Waco as well as the student athletes at Baylor. Whoa, hey, I'm going to pop in here real quick and tell you about FanDuel. Uh, also, what an awesome conversation with Tyler. I mean, dude, like, I got a lot of flack on Twitter. Well, I can just, you know, because I've seen the entire thing at this point, I can tell you. Caught a lot of flack on Twitter and just like a good dude, man. Like just wants Baylor to be good. And you know what else is good? FanDuel. They welcome new customers with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. You get $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet does not win, baseball season's in full swing. And America's number one sports book is FanDuel. Go bet on the Texas Rangers right now. You will probably win money because the Texas Rangers are good, which is a good thing. Take that Astros fans. Don't miss your chance to say right now your entire thousand dollars that you put on a bet. Now, what do I mean by save? If you put it down and the Rangers lose, you get it back in free place. You have a thousand dollars in bonus bets to throw around on FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on. It's the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. That is FanDuel, Major League Baseball, and FanDuel. Perfect partnership. I love them. All right, let's get back to the boys. So talking about this, this group licensing fee, that is, is that the main dam in, in this specific conversation that was referenced? Uh, like if, if in an ideal world, if Influxer says, hey, you know, this is what makes things easier in NIL. This is what X other power five school does. What does that look like? Which look, Tyler, explain it to me and everybody else. Like we're five, right? We don't get to be behind the closed doors with these conversations, but if if you've got it in a position where hey now Baylor's NIL is is convenient enough for these companies and athletes to create deals that get these kids paid quick what does that look like yeah well, i think in Baylor's case the big thing is communication you know being mm-hmm. more forthcoming and putting things online of what you need to do to work with these student athletes and the steps that need to be taken and uh you know, getting responses on emails, answering the phone. And this goes for a lot of schools. I mean, like I said earlier, there's so many schools that do have that. They are very communicative. Yeah. They are very, uh, you know, they re- they'll respond back very quickly within minutes of, of sending an email about an NIL inquiry. And so, you know, that would be certainly a big area of, of improvement for, for Baylor that we would hope to see and hope other companies aren't dealing with that. You, you know, and then if you're an agent, right, I'm an agent, I represent several big time athletes this is obviously different but communication is is key right Right. if you're going to keep progress you're going to keep momentum then just being able to answer questions of what's the university protocol around nil in a quick way is important and then to answer your original question about uh group licensing so it's very famous right now because of ea sports and what they're doing um Group licensing has been around for a while and it's now entering the NIL space. And and basically what that means is that a company will try to be the rights holder over an entire institution. If you're going to work with multiple athletes at that school, 
right? So a video game, for example, EA Sports, they're working through a company called One Team to um, handle the group licensing and distribute all the royalties for the student athletes. Yeah. Well, Baylor has another um, group licensing partner called Brand R. Well, Brand R was essentially left out of this EA deal because they're supposed to have the exclusive rights over Baylor and the student athletes. They're left out. That's why now they're suing EA Sports. So, you know, the way we look at it is like, well, if EA Sports doesn't think that this qualifies as group licensing and under their uh, uh, umbrella, then, right. you know, certainly we we don't as well. And even more so because not every player is receiving the same amount of royalty. Um, I hope that was, you know, explained well. well like, so, yeah, the, and correct me if I'm wrong here because I, I'm <laughs> – I'm learning as as everybody else is at, at in their car at home. So basically, EA has what could be considered from the surface a group licensing deal, right? They're giving the same number of dollars to every athlete. Their sure. claim is, hey, we're not group licensing. So if you, rather than giving a hundred dollars to every Baylor softball player, saying, look, uh, you know, here is the the best Baylor softball player. She sold a thousand jerseys. This is what comes from those 1,000 jerseys. That's that doesn't sound like group. Li- the, the the word group is, is not included in that to me. So if EA is saying, "Hey, we'll give everybody the same amount of money," that feels a little more like group than the individuality of what you're trying to do. Am, am I clear there? Exactly. You're yeah. Recited right back to me pretty well. So yeah, that what we're trying to do, we don't feel is group licensing. But again, the whole point is like we and and that's all up for interpretation can have those talks with with general counsel and you know the contract language and, and figure it out with attorneys however getting to that conversation is important and we've had that conversation with general counsel at other schools and have explained and we've been able to move forward and yeah. you know that's just where unfortunately and i'm sure this goes not just for nil at baylor but every a lot of things at baylor but things just are a lot slower there um and so if we're able to speed up that process i mean the faster the more nil deals you can turn around the more NIL uh, opportunities that can be presented, you can move forward with, and it just turns into a snowball of, of it's better all around better for the student athletes. So yeah. um, that's what we're trying to accomplish because we know, you know, it's not just us, right? It's going right. to be other companies that come in behind us. It's going to be, um, you, you know, your local mom and pop shops in Waco that are now seeing like, okay, I see what other people are doing. We can make more opportunities happen and we can make them happen rather quickly because we're well-educated. We've seen examples. And like I said, it just snowballs into to more opportunities for, for Baylor. It's not, again, mm-hmm. we're not the end all be all. It's just, we can help be a catalyst that can lead to more deals, more clear instructions and just things to move a lot quicker. Well, to throw this out here too, your your entire job, your the whole firm is to create NIL deals for athletes and, and get athletes paid. So if if that is your main focus, if that is what you do, and that's become a struggle with certain universities, Baylor included, then I can't imagine what Jasper's Barbecue, who wants to sponsor Blake Shapen, the the wall they run into when they don't completely understand NIL and what goes into it, and how tough that process would be for the mom and pop shops, the barefoot Wacos that want to come out and say, "Hey, we will we will sign this NIL deal with with X player," and really that company has no idea what they're doing, and there's no. You know, direction. So, and with that, look, Baylor has their NIL collective, right? They they brought on this council of people, um, and to me, it's like, okay, I, I'm seeing some universities that I've heard about who are Power Five that, like you said, they're answering the phones, right? They have hired people who your job is NIL. Does it feel like that? Where that's where Baylor's meant? Like, look, we've got this council, but none of those council members are answering the phone to figure out a, a deal for Shaylin Govan and Baylor softball. Is that where Baylor lacks the department of, Hey, let's figure this out. Well, I think, you know, with collectives, they're obviously ran by, you know, donors and, and boosters and supporters. Um, yeah. You know, Baylor is obviously relatively newer to compare comparative to the rest of the collectives that are out there. Um, and so I think even with collectives, we, you know, we deal with collectives all the time all across the country and, same thing there. Like they are, are, are trying to kind of figure it out and then there's a yeah. board and I'm not sure how, how Baylor's operates, but so I'm just speaking in general here, but when it comes to collectives, I think you really got to have a, a sustainable business model. And, you know, there was 
legislation just put out a couple of weeks ago or, or guidance rather um, by the IRS that, you know, the nonprofit route isn't necessarily going to be the route to go and the right outs yeah. aren't going to work like they thought. And so I think there just needs to be more um, opportunities that aren't just like donations from donors and boosters, but getting the community involved getting yeah. the businesses, getting the barefoots, getting Magnolia, getting them involved in which they can, these businesses can see an ROI, right? The ones that are going to be spending money. And you think about pro sports, pro sports and those players, those endorsement deals aren't done off donations. They're done off ROIs for, you know, the brands that they're going to be working with. And that's, that's the big part that I think uh, is going to set a lot of these collectives, a lot of these schools and these communities uh, apart and, you know, having better nil programs in place is getting the community involved not just looking for you know the donations uh, from the boosters but it's it's a full effort and we have a lot of amazing local businesses in waco that can really pour in and, and buy into this and and see roi because their student athletes they want to do nil deals they want to support barefoot they want to support the the small businesses in waco and can do it relatively you know, cheaper than normal influencer marketing because they're just so eager to do so. Um, and those opportunities are out there and it can be, you know, relatively cheap for the, the, the local businesses to, to get involved with. And so you just got to create an ecosystem. You got to create an environment of welcoming any and all you know, NIL deals so long as they are, um, you know, within normal guidelines, they aren't explicit, but are just make that ease of opportunity happen and that comes through communication quick communication that comes through uh you know showcasing and, and being proud of all of these deals and just allowing these brands to have easier a little bit easier access to the student athletes and it also takes the brands and businesses and donors to understand that hey these student athletes are busy they have school yeah. they have practice they have film they don't have time to go do you know three hours uh, at an, of an appearance on a Tuesday, whenever they also have practice film and weights the same day. So it, it, it does go both ways. Um, and that's where, you know, I hope we're trying to educate the market on as our company, Hey, these, these student athletes are busy, but at the same time, you can get some really good endorsements for, uh, much cheaper than traditional influencer marketing and still receive the same ROI that you're seeking but you don't need it to be a, a three hour appearance. It can be done a lot on social media. It can be done remotely through these video calls. There's a lot of ways to enhance and bring about these opportunities to not just the, the high income producing sports like, like football and basketball, but track, tennis, golf. There's a ton of opportunity there. Tyler, uh, before we get you out of here, and I thank you for like you've been the teacher for the last the last 20 minutes and we're all the elementary students trying to figure out this whole an ideal with you with you uh so when it comes to Baylor's brand right it's always been the the person over player they are they, they want the Jalen Petries of the world hey you you remember Jalen uh yeah, and so Jalen was one of my teammates He's, he was awesome 100 percent, and that that's the guy right they've, they've kind of built it around all right we are here for the Jalen Petries at Baylor. Um, and, and the university has not been explicit with this, but it feels like, and this is me talking, not you, it feels like, hey, here at Baylor, you're not going to make a million dollars like you could at Miami, but here at Baylor, instead, we'll give you person over player. We're going to stick to this brand. We're a conservative school. We have these values. And the fan base follows that to an extent as well. And so the university, it seems to me, has chosen to cling to that more so than saying we're going to be a force in NIL moving forward. Um, and in what you've seen in the landscape of college athletics, can you still get away? Like Syracuse has done away with NIL altogether. Can you still get away with that by saying, look, we'll give you 15,000. They'll give you a hundred thousand and still be competitive in athletics from what you've seen across. It's a tough question, but, but is that possible? Absolutely. It is. And I have a really good example for this. Uh, Florida Atlantic University is one of the schools that we work with. And, you know, we worked with their men's basketball team right when they made the, the Sweet 16. And, you know, they they were able to retain all of their players, yeah. every single player from that roster that made that final full run with what I believe to be a, a very similar mentality. I mean, just buying into the program, feeling that support. I mean, those those players could have gone 
anywhere, just like you saw, you know, the, the Farley Dickinson uh, coach leave and you saw a lot of those players transfer out. Same with St. Peter's last year. A lot of them that uh, can take care of, or take advantage of that opportunity. And you, it is possible. And Florida Atlantic was able to retain all of their players through kind of that same mentality of, hey, we're going to stick together. We're going to come back and we're going to do this run again. And I will say that, you know, Florida Atlantic has been a, a phenomenal school to work with. They are mm -hmm. very communicative. They support any and all you know, NIL opportunities and, and making it accessible for the student athletes and not just basketball, but all of their sports. They yeah. make it an environment that, hey, we know we're going to FAU or no, we're not going to make a million dollars, but there's going to be opportunities and they're going to be they're going to be there. And and it's, you know, a quantity over quality. And uh, hey, I'm not going to get a fifty thousand dollar deal, but I'm going to get 10 NIL deals, and even if they're yeah. small. And the creating that type of community and, and environment and campus and culture is what I really think Baylor can can really capitalize on. And even more so than, um, you know, a lot of the non power five schools and even have an advantage over a lot of other power five schools that Baylor, yeah. uh, you know, financially can and alumni base can be more supportive of. So, yes, to answer your question. I love it. Tyler, thanks again for joining the show today and giving a, a behind the scenes look. Cause here the, and, and uh, you know, I'll say it word everybody, you know, it's, it's what was there on the tweet, right? This all goes Baylor viral. And there were a lot of people who came after you personally and, and made attacks that felt unwarranted, not knowing your heart for Baylor. Um, I guess few of them not knowing that you had played for Baylor and knowing that you just want to help. So to know that that's where you sit, and that those conversations with Baylor have been reopened since that dialogue on social media is really good. And I'm just glad you took time to unpack things and explain that in a way today that proves you're not trying to take advantage of, of any university, namely the one you went to. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I'll always say is I obviously and I was only existed for two years. So got into this industry when I was at Baylor, a lot of my teammates were giving money, having to send money back home. You know, yeah. they get their, their monthly stipend check, they pay rent. The rest went back to their, their families in, in Dallas or Houston. And that was always hard to see. And so just any sort of way to help supplement some of this income um, for these players when, you know, the schools and the media companies are making millions on on Saturday, yet our our cornerbacks are sending their money back home or, you know, our, our, our second string defensive linemen sending money back home. And it's just, that's what I saw and why we want to make such a difference and coming at it from a, a lens of, of being a student athlete. And it, it was, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that the people, yeah, coming after me on, on Twitter um, certainly knew that that would probably happen, you know, not a big deal. It's just like I was talking to another friend the other day, I was like, I'm seeing all these tweets of how bad Baylor NIL is. NIL is how bad um, or how much improvement there needs to be from all the different programs. And, you know, seeing that, and it, even the tweet itself came from Sikkim365. I chime in, you know, say, I actually have firsthand experience with this. I'd like to hopefully see it improved. And all of Baylor Twitter is like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is my first tweet in, in two <laughs> years on anything NIL related to, to Baylor. Yeah. And I'm just trying to hopefully be a voice of reason and see some improvement again no one's going to have this figured out it's only been a couple of years but that doesn't mean we can't improve that doesn't mean we can't get better that doesn't mean we can't put stuff out here like this that can get the community talking about it more get them more engaged provide more of these opportunities i, I talk to boosters all the time including baylor boosters that see an IL and they think it's they think it's the big donations they think it's yeah. oh I, I i gotta donate and that just doesn't make sense no it, it can be helping them endorse your your brand i mean most donors own a business right yep. that's usually how they've gotten into that that position well have that student athlete promote your business have mm -hmm. them do normal endorsement deals have them get them more involved in the community and just providing more of the opportunity these student athletes the right ones and the the culture that Baylor's trying to build, like I said, is not trying to make $100,000 or a million dollars off NIL deals. They just want some NIL deals. doesn't yeah. matter if it's 
twenty dollars, a hundred dollars. They just want to feel supported by their community, and money is not their their main driver. It's, I think people would be su pleasantly surprised with how many student athletes, and and even more so at Baylor, that because of the great culture that Baylor's built, that it doesn't have to be commas and lots of zeros at the end of, of these NIL deals. And that's how you keep them there. And that's how you keep the retainment and build a culture of like you're talking about, we're not going to be competing with, with Miami on a million dollars. We're just not, but we can provide a lot of opportunities that will lead yeah. to future careers that will lead to, um, you know, future opportunities and long relationships that keep the Waco and Baylor community together and stronger. Well, dude, uh, look, I'm all for it, especially because this is, there are a lot of quality athletes at Baylor, you know, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. There are a lot of great personalities that deserve to have compensation for the work that they put in to put the university on the map and continue to further what Baylor does and the mission that Baylor carries. So Tyler, thanks again for joining the show today. For those that listen, thanks for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. Come back tomorrow, Wednesday, yes, Wednesday. Uh, we'll be talking about Baylor more. I don't, haven't decided the topic about it yet. You just, you'll come back. We'll talk about football or basketball or NIL or expansion something. This has been, it always will be. Come back. Locked On. Thanks again for making it your first listen every single day. Baylor!